Hey guys, welcome to another lesson. So today we're looking at energetics, right? And energetics have to do with energy, right? And specifically we're looking at heat energy. So when a reaction occurs, there is always a change in energy between the reactants and the products. So there is always a change between the total energy that our bonds, energy in the bonds of the reactants and compared to the total energy in the bonds of our products. And that's basically because the compounds between reactants and products are different, right? So the types of energy change, we have two. We have the exothermic reaction or the endothermic reaction. So the exothermic reaction means, exo means out, thermic means heat. So heat is actually sent out from your reaction to your surrounding, right? So in that case, we have an energy profile diagram that shows that our reactant has a very high energy, right? And then it peaks up to start the reaction and then falls down for the energy in our products to be low, right? So because of this drop in energy is sent out to the environment as heat, right? Now, the new term here, activation energy. So we notice from our reactant, it has to start, it has to go up before it can start producing your products, right? So this spike from your reactant to your maximum energy is known as your activation energy. And activation energy is the energy that is required in order for the chemical reaction to start. So if you don't have that amount of energy, then the reactants will not actually combine to give you your products. Right, so that's the purpose of your activation energy. So in this case, we notice that the energy in our reactants is greater than the energy in our products. So that shows us that energy was lost from this reaction to the, the surrounding or the environment. The next type of reaction is called the endothermic reaction. And this is where we have the energy in our reactants is lower Right? And remember, it has to peak to a maximum before the energy, the reaction can start. So this is here, from our reactant to the maximum peak is our activation energy. Right, So once it reaches that energy, the reaction starts, and then our product has more energy than our reactant. Right, And because it has more energy than our reactant, right? so remember the reactant bonds have this amount of energy but our products have a higher, so therefore energy is drawn from the surrounding to this reaction in order for the products to have more energy, right, than our reactant. So in this case, our product energy is greater than our reactant energy, energy is absorbed, right? So the energy content, content in any substance is known as enthalpy, right? So enthalpy is a term that you will be familiar with when you talk about energetics in chemistry, right? Now, the equation to find the enthalpy change, right? Because we are not able to find the enthalpy in a specific compound, right? So we find the enthalpy change, which is basically the delta E, so the change in the energy between our reactants and our product, right? And that is fine, but found by multiplying the mass times the specific heat capacity, times the change in your temperature, right? Now, the main area, that, the main one we're going to look at is the calculating the heat of neutralization, right? And the heat of neutralization is the heat change when one mole of water is produced in a neutralization reaction. And remember, neutralization reaction is, involves acid and a base, right? So it's basically some books will have, instead of water, they will say it's the energy required to in a neutralization reaction to get a neutral solution or a neutral product. And in this case, the neutral product would be water, right? So let's look at the example there. So we have 50 cm cube of sodium hydroxide solution with an initial temperature of 29.4 degrees Celsius and a concentration of two moles per dm cube is added to 50 cm cube of sulfuric acid of concentration one mole per dm cube at a temperature 30 degrees Celsius. The maximum temperature attained after you, you mix the two 
solution um, two compounds together is 43.2 degrees Celsius we need to determine the heat of neutralization so let's go step by step all right so the first step in this question would be to write our chemical formula because this is the same as mole right so as a previous lesson I did first thing is to write your chemical equation so in this case we have NaOH plus H2SO4 to get the salt is Na2SO4 plus water right and in this case we have our equation we ensure it is balanced so we have 2 Na here so that means we put 2 here right and here we have 4 H's we only have 2 here so we put 2 there right and that balances off our chemical equation right so now that we have our chemical equation we need to know one remember we're looking at the heat energy from water right so the first thing we need and look back at our equation we need the mass we this the c for water is a constant and we the delta change right so let's go All right, so in this reaction, we notice that the, the mole of, of our NaOH, right, instead of it being two for the reaction that, was, that occurred, it would be that NaOH has a concentration of two, right? So if we have one mole from concentration, it would be concentration times volume, right? The concentration is two and the volume is 50 cm cube which we divide by a thousand to change it to dm cube so we get 0 0.1 mole right and because this and water has the same number two to two ratio so that means this is the same mole as water right so the mole of water is 0 0.1 mole all right then the next thing is we use the volume of the solution so the volume of solution was we add 50 cm cube of NaOH and 50 cm cube of sulfuric acid so we get 100 cm cube right and from the volume we have the mass of solution right so the mass of a solution this is a constant that you need to know that 1 cm cube of any solution is equal to one gram, right? So since we have a hundred cm cube here, this is a hundred gram solution. All right. So now we have the mass, right? And we should know that the C of water is four point two joule per gram per centimeter. All right. Now we need the temperature change. So we know that the, the average temperature before, so the initial temperature before was 29.4 and 30.0. We divide this by two because it's two values and we get 29.7 degrees Celsius, right? And then it was found that the final temperature was 43.2 degrees so therefore your change in temperature would be your t final minus your t initial and t final is 43.2 and initial is 29.7 so we get the difference to be 13.5 degrees celsius all right so now we have all the values mass we have c and we have delta g delta change we can find your heat of neutralization so in this case your heat of neutralization so delta H is equal to M which is a hundred times C which is 4.2 times the temperature change which is 13.5 
And in this, we always write our answers in kilojoule, 56.7 kilo joule. All right? So that's your energy. Sorry, let's use energy here. So therefore, your energy is that. So your enthalpy, if the question it asks, would be negative 56.7 kilo joule. Now, the reason why it's negative 56.7 is because we look from initial temperature, right? The temperature increased. So the product temperature increased from the 29.7 the 29 to 43.2. So because we have an increase in temperature, that means your product, your reactants actually lost heat, right? to the environment, so we increase the solution temperature, right? And because of that, the negative symbolizes that this reaction was a exothermic reaction. So once the, the change in enthalpy is a negative change, then that shows that reaction is exothermic. If it was a positive, then that means it is endothermic. And if it's positive, then that means your final temperature would be less than your initial temperature. All right, guys? So this is the same process you'll do to calculate any heat of neutralization for any question, all right? So the basic aim is to remember these two concepts, that one cm cube is equal to one gram of any solution, all right? And the sea of water is 4.2 gram per, joule per gram per centimeter degree Celsius. Alright, so thank you very much guys for watching and see you guys next time.